Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. We have a special guest with us today, Roman from Thermal Grizzly and other things, probably a lot of other things. I don't know how you find the time, but we're here to talk about some exciting new products. And of course, you did also sponsor us over here, so thank you for that. Thank you um, very much for that. <laughs> the Harbour Unboxed Computex coverage is brought to you by MSI and Thermal Grizzly. Check out MSI's MEG 342C QD OLED gaming monitor, which brings stunning image quality and ultra fast 0.1 millisecond rated response times in an immersive ultra wide format. The 342C includes a 175Hz refresh rate, premium 99% DCI-P3 colors, display HDR True Black 400 certification, and the brilliance of a bright QD OLED screen. For more information, check the link in the description. Also supporting our Computex trip is Thermal Grizzly and their Cryonaut and Hydronaut Thermal Grease. Cryonaut is designed for extreme demands of overclocking, offering excellent thermal conductivity, long-term stability, and it isn't electrically conductive. Then for larger applications, Hydronaut offers an attractive price to performance ratio and is recommended for water cooling systems. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. So what have you got for us today? Yeah, we have a few things I brought with me. I mean, we don't have a booth here. It's uh, like it would be a bit overkill for we're still a tiny company, um, but we mainly wanted to show this one, Dryer Sheet, uh, which is um, a new product. It's for us, it's kind of the in-between between liquid metal and uh, thermal paste mm -hmm. because it has like very nice um, properties to it. Let's say it doesn't age. Yep. It still has very good performance, like a very good paste. Not quite as good as liquid metal, mm -hmm. but you have the ability of having like a good paste without the downside of aging. No drying um, out. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. Es especially for direct dye type stuff, if you've gone all that effort, uh, I mean, how long do you expect like uh, the liquid metal to last? I'm not exactly sure, but obviously that lasting longer will be better, especially for somebody who doesn't want to be taking it apart all the time and hard tube liquid cooling and all that, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Yeah, that's exactly the point. So we had those um, direct dye water coolers. So that's one for AM5, which mm. we're just about to launch right now. And when we made it, obviously I was testing everything with liquid metal because for me, liquid metal is the go-to thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's the highest performing you can get. But then, as you said, depending on where you use it on and how you use it, um, you might also be unlucky that after, let's say, half a year, okay. the performance will go a little bit downhill. And then, as you said, like in a custom water cooling loop, nightmare. Taking <laughs> apart a hard, hard tubing loop, it's, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've uh, been there. And so you realistically it's only about a five degree difference anyway from that so i think for most people if you're dropping it already down what 20 25 degrees from the stock five degrees you know while it's nice to get every degree possible for the practicality of that it's probably worth going with for a lot of people yeah. opposed to liquid metal the, the, the thing is really if you put it on the sort of cpu and mount a direct eye cooler on it it will just never age it will just have the same performance in like three years. And that's crazy. And the, and the cool thing is, sometimes you, you have to worry about that like liquid metal will bake mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. two components together. Right. If you, if you use, um, let's say, a copper water cooling block or like an AIO, mm -hmm. the liquid metal will form alloys. Yes, okay. And then like it's changing the composition and you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it, it's going okay. to harden or yeah, whatever. Okay. And then we had cases that the, the CPU was stuck to an AIO. Oof. Like, <laughs> if you would try to remove it, it would just break. And okay. I don't know what's going to happen in four years on an AIO. So if you would use that, then it might be a little bit worse at first, but you know that after three years, you can just take it off and we'll all be fine. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah, you don't have to worry about whether it's nickel plated or anything like that, as you do with the liquid yes. metal. Okay, yeah. yeah, I hadn't even thought of that. That's, that's very cool. Yeah. The only downside though, I mean, I have to point it out, it's a quite expensive product. Mm -hmm. So the, the MSRP is going to be around $20. Okay, yeah, yeah so I mean, if you don't have to reapply it and stuff and it lasts quite a long time, I think probably works out being pretty similar in the end. So yeah. not too bad. It's just that the, the part is still, it's a very young product. It's made by a company in Sweden. We've been working uh, on that for a uh, longer time. And they are experts in this like entire graphene business. Mm -hmm. They've been working on things like that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, so together with them, uh, we were able to bring this to the market. And yeah, I think it's it's a huge benefit for the, for the no normal enthusiast. Yeah, mm. Yeah. well, um, I've, you've sent us a couple and we've uh, only just before Computex, so I haven't got to test them out properly yet. But yeah, they're pretty impressive stuff. And I was explaining it to Balin, our, our video editor, and he thought they were very cool. And you've, 
the structure of those is aligned differently to previous ones. So it's more, I'm not sure what you say, like an, almost a vertical orientation. Exactly, yeah. Like graphene is a, a 2D, basically a 2D material. It's like a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. It's like a, um, a sheet, mm -hmm. a graphene. And what they do is they basically bake together a huge amount of those sheets and then they lift them up wow. and then they cut them. Oh, okay. That's so impressive. That is, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. That's cool. And um, so, yeah, the, the, the way they do it, it's insane. It's a yeah. very complex wow. uh, process to do it. And they, they're experts in doing this. They, yeah, they're able to pro uh, provide this technology to us. And the performance is, is really good. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like, like a good paste. Yeah. Wow, that's so basically they're taking like paper, like a flat object, stacking them all together to create like almost like a 3D object and then cutting it to change the orientation of the. Yeah. And that, and that, that allows it to suck the heat through yes. them much more efficiently. And what you have to keep in mind is that this is 0 0.2 millimeter thin. So it's like extremely thin and. Careful. <laughs> yeah, and it's 50 by 50 millimeters. So that's the biggest size we have. And it's, it's fragile. It's fragile. But to be able to cut through this and maintain this thickness without breaking it that's the tough process here and uh, that's amazing yeah we have different sizes so we have like 33 by 33 or like 38 by 38 depending on what like CPU size or GPU size it works well on both yep um, we have a table actually on the website where you can look up what kind of size you would need for which product so what size do you recommend for the water block uh, for this one it would be 25 by 25 yeah, okay, so that makes the, sense. the pretty small one yep. and we actually supply uh, a tiny sticker to this water block because this is also electrically conductive. Yes. <laughs> so you have to make sure it's not touching SMDs on your CPU, for example. And yep. uh, we have a, a tiny sticker that we supply with this one okay. uh, that you can stick on the top of your CPU to cover the SMDs oh, okay, yep. in case you want to use the, the cryo sheet. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Well, that is very impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So a product that I'm very excited about. Uh, I mentioned in our ad spot as well, why have you? So show us the why have you. So what I brought to Computex is this adapter version of, of why have you. Um, I also want to highlight that this is made by Elmore. So okay. the, the entire design and evaluation process was done together with Elmore uh, because he has so much knowledge in PCB design and like, like connectors and everything because he has been working in mainboard R&D at ASUS several years and he's like a well-known extreme overclocking with huge amount of experience and if he tells you that it's working then it's actually working okay. so <laughs> well um, a, a question i wanted to ask you right away is was this your idea or was it elmore's or was it like a collaboration with so the, the, the funny part was that elmore created a tool to measure power like it's called a pmd it's like a big piece where you can plug in individual pieces yep, yep. and then i said this is nice, but we, we need this as an adapter like that, with okay. 180 degrees. As soon as I yeah. saw it, I'm like, how has it taken so long to get something like this? Because it's, yeah. it's, it solves, in my opinion, so many different issues that you know, PC enthusiasts have with systems like cable management, and then just being able to show like a really cool readout of how much power the GPU is using. And yeah, it's very, it's, it's kind of like a, it, it's, a, it's a very practical tool, but it, yeah, it serves multiple purposes. So I just, I just love it. Thank you. And uh, I've been pushing for a white version. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying our best. Uh, it should be possible. I mean, this is an uh, aluminium case. It's, okay, yep. it's milled and it's anodized. So probably would have to look into uh, like powder coating it or something. But we will figure something out uh, for sure. I mean, first of all, we have to see what the market reception is because it's also not too cheap because um, MSRP for this is between fifty and sixty dollar, depending on the. Yeah, um, I mean, I would buy it for that. Like, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of it. I think it's very cool. Uh, so yeah, as soon yeah. as we got them, I was excited about the idea of it, but then putting it to you, seeing it, and seeing like how easy it makes cable management, like running the cables up around the graphics card or over the back of it, it never looks that good, yeah. even with really nice yeah. sleeve cables. So I think, and that one's cool. I like that one. I think it really well complements like high-end system builds that are trying to go for that clean look. Like you're getting that power readout, which is genuinely very useful. Mm. And then, yeah, as you say, like hiding the cables. And now you've brought out this version, which is, as you said, sort of the the NVIDIA Be Gone version. <laughs> I think you used slightly different words earlier, but um, yeah, that turns the 16-pin the into the standard 8 pins. And as Steve said earlier, I think it's great for people who have beautiful cable management. They can just plug straight in without having to switch over to a, yeah, one of the 16-pin cables. Or easy to achieve beautiful cable, which I like. I hate yeah. cable management. Anything that makes cable management easier, I'm all for. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I recently had an event with other German YouTubers and were like live on stage. Mm. And then in the end, um, there was like a game, and the punishment for the game was like whoever loses has to do the cable management of the system. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so, horrific. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, that's how it is. I mean, it was a, it was a Corsair build, and it was prior to Corsair Link. Okay, I mean, so now with a lot of RGB cables and things like 18 uh, RGB cables. Um, yeah. yeah, good but, luck with that. Yeah, that's that's hours of your time that you'll yeah. never get back. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not going to uh, solve that problem. But no. um, I mean, this version is, uh, as you can see, it's uh, three times eight pin to 12 volt high power, which might make you think like, okay, so one eight pin is rated at 150. Mm -hmm. And then this is only 450, mm -hmm. whereas NVIDIA can go up to 600 watt, right? Mm -hmm. But all I can say is that it's one thing that most of the vendors say, yeah, you can do 150 uh, watt on an 8-pin, but the connector is typically rated at 300 watts. That's right, yeah, yeah. So you can, the, the safety margin on the 8-pin is amazing. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see problems on that. Like, yeah. Um, and bigger connectors, they clip it easier. Yeah. There's less wriggle room uh, because of that. So Realistically, we pulled like 1500 watts across three eight pins. Mm -hmm. We tried that several times during XOC. It was never a problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that, that, like four times eight pin is just absolute overkill. Mm -hmm. Reason for that is simply because this connector has j just like too, lo too small margin of error. Yeah. yeah, and although you can't remove that connector entirely, the advantage of this design is you're not getting that wriggling of so that should seat in quite firmly and when you're adjusting cables and stuff playing through power supply you won't have it wriggle out going left and right yes and what i would absolutely recommend is that you plug three times eight pin first uh, on and your cable pop, yep. and then just plug it into the card because then you can really push it in because then you're not pushing it back out essentially yeah, then yep. you, do, you don't touch it and it should be absolutely fine okay yeah so how many configurations of this do you sell because i've seen at steve's place that there's you know different orientations for people with different types of cards how many how many different models are there in total right now we have 10 10 yeah. so yep. we have one time eight pin two time eight pin three times eight pin yep and then we have the 12 volt high power to 12 volt high power and then the adapter one and then for each one we have normal and reversed yes yeah so yeah because yeah because the connectors are for some reason not universal so some yeah. manufacturers love that you know it flipped the other way which means that won't work because it you won't better get to the back of it so that's why when i said to roman could you could I have a white version please he was like oh no <laughs> <laughs> it makes it 20 instantly yeah yeah but we were looking into if we can make the like the interchangeable the covers yeah, but yeah. It's, it's a bit difficult because i mean essentially you're working on a pcb and uh you know with you you need to apply the correct torque on the screws or something like theoretically you could damage something if you don't mount it correctly and uh i, I know you love all your aluminium and everything you could almost get away with making like like covers that go over them like out of plastic it wouldn't look nearly as premium but i think in white builds that would work like it's cover. not even a bad idea. Like co coloured <laughs> covers. Because then you could offer a whole variety of, of colours that we, way. We should have more chats like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, that, I will definitely look into that. Yeah, I think that'll work. You, as you said, I'm a big fan of aluminium and like... Uh, well, I am C as well. It's CNC milling, yeah. having nice surfaces. It, yeah. it just makes it look so much better. You want to yeah. avoid plastic yeah. as much as possible. I mean, obviously, we were looking into making a plastic case. And if you do like uh, injection molding, mm -hmm. it's like a, a tenth of the price. Yeah. Because one of these covers is like two euro roughly if we make it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can make it for like I don't know like ten cents. Yeah, with yeah. injection molding. But well, I'm, the, I'm an enthusiast. I like aluminium. Yeah. Well, the benefit yeah. of the cover is you still get the strength of the aluminium to protect and house the whole product, and then people can just you know customize it. Plus, it can actually dissipate heat. Yes. And uh, because the PCB has a circuit on it as well, and there's some current flowing through, the PCB will get warm, maybe like 40, 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. And uh, to be able to like dissipate, even though it's like one or two watts, but you have to dis dissipate it one or two watts. It has to go somewhere. Right? You, can't, you can't just hide it yeah. in there. So I don't know how much the plastic covers would hurt that. Something to look into anyway. I'll leave yeah. it with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have here is... Um, what we call high performance heat better mm -hmm. for AM5 and we are currently looking into making this as well for Intel. Okay. Um, it's also some sort of a direct light cooling solution because you have to delete your CPU, you mount it on there and then you can mount like anything like any AIO, any water cooler. Mm -hmm. 
monoblocks maybe not because it's a little bit lower than stock height okay like by 1.1 1 .1, 1 1.2 millimeters so it depends on the mounting harbor i suppose what tolerances are there yeah so that's kind of like almost view that as a step up from the contact frame yeah it's, probably it's, like, it's, it's kind of like a mix of a contact frame and a direct eye tool. yeah yeah uh, that's also why it has the same outer shape mm -hmm. Uh, because we could actually reuse some of our tooling mm -hmm. uh, from milling to, uh, right, to yeah, use that. I recognize it straight yeah. away. <laughs> it's the same for, as you can see, it's the same outer shape for the water yep. block as well. It works. Yeah, I have to make it uh, cheaper, right? Mm -hmm. And what we're currently working on is to have this, well, this cooler, um, not direct dye, but as a normal water block. Okay. So it would um, have a contact frame and a water block at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you would you remove your Intel ILM yep. and just mount the cooler directly onto the CPU. Okay. So it's actually bad for me because I'm selling one contact frame less. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, I can sell a nice water cooler. Yeah, so, so this is the only uh, better performance, I imagine, because... You, it will be much easier for the user. Like, yep. you just remove the ILM, clamp it on there. You don't have to worry about uh, contact frame mounting or anything. And then... It, it, the goal is also to have a, a cheap water cooler if it works out. Like we're trying to hit something like ninety dollar, uh, ninety dollar, okay. ninety euro, um, which I think is a reasonable price for well, that. That's really good for the whole package, essentially. So yeah, yeah. And then you'd want to add something like that in, or, or some some uh, you know, liquid metal. Yeah. That's cool. And there's an RGB version, isn't there, of this? Yeah. So that that's basically the RGB version. Yep. Uh, it's it's the same bottom and part. This pops with, over it. Yeah, with uh, so it's a nickel plated copper piece, mm -hmm. and we added this insulator sheet on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Even though technically this should not be required, because AMD says that this area should not have any components, right? Right. right. But you never know what the mainboard manufacturers are doing. Uh, yeah. If they decide yeah. to, I don't know, have a weird pin out there or whatever, mm -hmm. so we added that for safety. And then you have this cover on here. Mm -hmm. It's just an aluminium cover, and it clamps on here with magnets. Oh, okay, that's simple. nice. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Yeah. And because it's symmetric, you can have it in either direction to the, have the cable exit at the bottom or at the top. And then it's a very tiny, yeah. sleek, very neat, nice direct air water cooler. So that's what I've been working on. Yeah, la last half year or year, uh, besides YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just just doing it in your free time, just inventing all of this stuff it's actually getting uh, worse and worse you know? uh, yeah like, yeah. like uh, I like from let's say two years ago I basically did YouTube full-time mm -hmm. like during the entire week mm -hmm. and now I have like five days a week doing Grizzly and I have to spend my Saturday and Sunday doing YouTube so it's, yep. get, it's getting a bit out of hand uh, work-life yeah. balance there's not ideal <laughs> but you know you gotta uh, do I what you gotta it, do I call it the work work uh, balance oh, work, uh, work, I've got a yeah. similar thing but I don't have thermal <laughs> Grizzly on the side <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. full on. Impressive stuff. Thank you very much. All right, well, yeah, as I said, very impressive stuff. Thanks for taking the time to show us all the products, and I hope one of those is in the mail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I definitely um, want to test yeah it you out. are on the list of the first awesome. uh, sample Thank batch. You. Thank you. Looking forward to see your feedback. If yeah, you like yeah. the mounting, or if you don't like it, let me know. I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll let you know. And yeah. Um, yeah, let me know how you got the covers for those as well, because... <laughs> I have a white system and I wouldn't mind a white one. I will try my best. Yeah. I recently also had a white build where I put it in and the people were like, yeah, I would not have used it in there. It's kind of crashing the build and I yeah. kind of agree. So, yeah, it, it would yeah. stand out as cool as it is. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much, Roman. Thank you guys very much. And uh, thank you. we'll see you again soon, hopefully. Hopefully. See you guys. Bye.